G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope that you're having a fantastic day, thank you for tuning in, now let's sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and let's get right into it. Posted by a throwaway account, titled, I am very much jealous of my husband's ex-wife. So I, 40 female, am very much jealous of my husband's, 50 male, ex. Our relationship started with an affair. I know it was wrong. Their marriage was on the rocks, and my husband wanted to end it. When she, 48 female, learned about the affair, she didn't scream or shout at me. She was rather calm. She only asked me if I truly loved her husband. I said yes. She told me that if I'm going to be a part of my husband's life, I better treat her kids, 19 female, 16 male, and 14 female, with respect, and not push them to accept me. She didn't even create any hassle in the divorce. Things were tough. My husband's parents and friends really criticized us, and his parents almost disowned him. If it wasn't for his ex, they would have went with it. But his ex convinced them not to cut us off. Their parents did forgive my husband, but I still feel like an outsider to them. But they do love our kid, for male. My husband's ex is very different. She never held a grudge against me, always pushed her kids to have a relationship with her dad, his oldest doesn't talk to him because of the divorce, and it always hurts my husband that his daughter wants nothing to do with them. The rest of them are good. They do not love me, but they are very civil. She never badmouthed me or called me a homewrecker. She did her best for the kids. She still tries her best so that her oldest daughter has a good relationship with her dad. I used to think that she's a silly woman for not holding a grudge. She was always nice to me. When I was pregnant, she first congratulated me, and even though she wasn't invited to my baby shower, she sent me a diaper genie as a gift. I always felt guilty that I hurt such a pious woman. To make it more complicated, she's in a relationship with my cousin, 45 male. My parents love her, uncle and aunt love her, even my cousin's kids love her. She never discriminated between her kids and mine. She always sends some cookies or extra food for my son with her kids whenever it's their visitation time. She even met my son and treats him like her own. For the longest time, I wondered why she's like this. Is she trying to win her husband back? I even asked her why she doesn't hate me when I was her husband's mistress. She told me she doesn't see the point because whether or not she hates me, her marriage was over anyways. I am jealous of her. She is not just beautiful, but also graceful. I know I was very much younger than her when my husband started the affair, but I can say that she is much more better looking than I am even if I took her place in her husband's life, but I can never be her. In the comments, Prettier Genghis says, Not only she got rid of the cheater, but got a new boyfriend and is revered by everyone. Good for her. You know that saying, kill you with kindness, lol? Ex-wife has done nothing but be nice to this lady, and it's killing her. Best revenge ever. Ex-wife is a lady that I aspire to be like if I was in that situation. Maybe part of you thinks that if he can cheat and leave a beautiful, graceful, forgiving woman with whom he had built a life with, he will eventually leave his mistress and it won't be as easy for you to pick up the pieces. You reap what you sow. I also have a lot of regrets. Yes, and no one's gonna support you, OP. You do realize that, right? If he really leaves you for someone younger, his children from the first marriage may choose to love the new wife. The only person who will choose any kindness towards you will be the ex. Let's be honest, if he can cheat on her, such an amazing woman, why won't he cheat on you? It is always easier the second time around, and everyone already sees you as the evil homewrecker. No one's gonna give him trouble for cheating on you, except the ex, maybe. Itsy Bitsy Crispy says, Tang, she's almost killed you with kindness. And she's not even trying. She just sounds very kind. I too strive to be nice and liked, just for the good of it. I'm not sure about much, but it seems like you just keep saying how kind she is. Lilu123 says, Perhaps you were hoping that she would treat you terribly so that you could justify your actions in being the other woman and contributing to all the pain and hurt that your husband caused. It'd be easy to feel justified in a decision to be the affair partner if you can demonize the other woman. Seems like she's moved on and can be happy without any hate in her heart. Good luck to you. Exactly. No one can pull the crazy ex-wife scenario, so OP and her husband both don't look great compared to her. I hope that OP moves past it for her own sake. Back up to the post, we have an edit. 
I knew very well I wasn't going to be treated like a good person here. I know I'm not a good person either for breaking up a home. So, I am editing this to clear a few things out. I know I made typos, I wrote this in a hurry. I didn't even have time to reverse what I wrote. I am not in a good position right now, and yes, it is because of my husband too. But that's a story that I'll share later. I fixed the typos, so I hope it's clear to you all. Yes, I like her a lot. She is an amazing human. I'm glad that I don't have any ex-wife drama in my life. And yes, a part of that really makes me insecure because I keep trying to find a fault in her because even my own parents like her when she attended the family functions as my cousin's girlfriend. My cousin and her met each other a year ago when he was visiting me and she came to drop off my kid along with hers. She sometimes invites my son to her house and that's why she herself dropped him off. I asked her to stay for dinner, and there my cousin and her hit it off and decided to date. That's pretty much it. Also, no, this was not written by her. She doesn't use social media that much as far as I know. And now onto the update, titled, My husband is still in love with his ex-wife, I feel so alone. I made a post a few days ago. There I vented my frustrations about how my husband's ex was so good. Yes, a part of me was jealous of her. She was so nice and kind. Her kids are really well behaved. I know they will never accept me as part of the family, but they haven't even been mean to me or my son in any ways. Till now, I thought the problem was my husband's ex. But no, the problem was him. I do not know how it came to this. I agreed when we started dating that he was married. He told me his marriage was already over and he would be getting a divorce soon. Their marriage had problems, that is all I knew. The problem started almost a few months ago. I could see him being distant towards me. I know couples go through stages in life where they have been distant towards each other. I tried to give him the space he needs. Before getting married, we went to premarital counseling because my husband was really adamant to not screw up. For those months, there was no intimacy. I didn't think he would cheat because he wasn't late or hid anything on his phone. Then when we finally became intimate and made love, he said his ex-wife's name. That is when I froze. Why? The next day I confronted him and he didn't lie to me. He broke down in tears and said that he was still in love with his ex. My heart broke. I guess I know now how she must have felt when I was the other woman. I asked him if he really loved her, why did he marry me? I got the full picture after six effing years. Yes, they had problems, but according to my husband, it was his fault. He never confessed his affair. His ex-wife found out about the affair on her own and confronted him. He was ready to make the marriage work, but before that, his wife served him divorce papers. The last thing she said to him was that she's giving him the freedom that he wants. My husband said that he begged and pleaded. His ex was smart. She only kept the house and 50-50 for the kids. She even explained to the kids the reason for their divorce. His oldest daughter knew the actual reason, but the other two were given a kid-friendly reason. On top of his divorce and his oldest daughter not talking to him, that really put a toll on his mind. I was there for him. He thought that he should move on with his life with me instead, but deep down he always loved her. He always feels guilty for hurting her. I understand all of that, but I don't understand why now. He said he wants to start a new life with me. I apologize to everyone. I do not hate his ex. It is him that I am mad at. He is a weak man. I am not a better woman. He will always have a place in his heart for her because they've been together since teenagers. I notice the signs now. Whenever he would see his ex with her new boyfriend, he would get upset. He tried to hide it, but I know why. I am living in the guest room until we sort things out. I guess y'all are happy because I'm getting what I deserve. In the comments, Girl with Dragon Tattoo says, I don't think you've learned a lesson because no one wants you to be miserable. They wanted you to be accountable, which you still are not. You wanted to feel superior, to feel chosen, to feel like you were the first and best pick, but you entered into a situation where that could literally never be true, because if that was the case, he would have left his ex before attempting a relationship with you. The cruelty was the point. You enjoyed making and imagining her feel less than and foolish. You reveled in that and thought less of her. Now you're standing in the mirror and instead of seeing her, you see yourself. I said on your last post that the reason she's able to find happiness is because she has self-respect. I still stand by that. 
Sure, he's a person with no self-respect who begged for a relationship he intentionally sabotaged, but you have basked in the turmoil of him demolishing their life. You didn't care, you had no empathy, yet you're expecting so much. He lied to his ex and had an affair, whether he later admitted or not, so why did you think that he could never lie to you too? That's something that I simply don't understand about people who enter into relationships as affair partners. You agreed with his values until they negatively affected you. So again, this is less about him being weak and more about you. You need to take accountability for yourself and stop placing blame on the ex or even on your husband, no matter how pathetic he is. The circumstances of your current life are based around your decision making. This is a stupid name Zero says, hook up with a married man and be surprised when it doesn't work out? Shake my head. You know he would cheat on you with her in a second if he had the chance. If they'll cheat with you, they'll cheat on you. That is a fact. At least he was actually honest with you now and you can make whatever decision you want. A lifetime of knowing your partner would rather be with someone else does not sound like fun to me though. I guess y'all are happy because I'm getting what I deserve. I still think people who usually say this are just being passive aggressive. They are. They think being glad someone's getting what they deserve shows some kind of moral failure. They really just want people to reassure them that they're not that bad and everyone deserves forgiveness. I feel everyone deserves forgiveness if they take full responsibility. Anyone asking for forgiveness is immediately incongruous with this in my opinion. To truly repent means accepting the scorn of your actions in perpetuity and still doing what you can to rectify your mistakes with no expectations for if it'll change someone's mind. Forgiveness is for victims to heal, not to make shitty people feel better for doing shitty things. OP thought that she had won a prize. Turns out that it was a crackerjack toy. It reminds me of that Tyler Perry movie where the female protagonist has an affair with her boss and has a kid with her. When their affair was exposed, the woman leaves her husband because she believes her affair partner will leave his wife. The woman's mom and sister warned her and told her that he will never leave his wife, but the woman was arrogant and left her husband anyways. In the end, her affair partner left her, she got fired from her job, and her husband left her and started a successful company, while she went from having a job in finance to living in a small two-bedroom apartment. Mistresses really think they're special. It's called the family that prays. And Alyeska23 says, I feel sorry for the kids and for the ex. OP has just enough awareness of her own shittiness to realize she is a bad person. Cheating husband is a worthless POS. At least the kids have one good mother in the ex. The fact that she's so graceful and even being kind and gentle to a child that isn't hers. Karma rewarded her with a large and loving extended family. Good riddance to her trash husband and his mistress. I wish the ex all the happiness in the world. Our next post is by user throw ra not my dad 113 titled would i be the asshole if i ask my stepdad to walk me down the aisle instead of my dad when i 28 female was four years old my dad cheated on my mom with his now wife and mom divorced him she got 50 50 on the custody I hated going to my father's house because I didn't want his wife to tell me what to do. My dad reduced his time when he got married. I was six at that time and wasn't even invited to his wedding, but his stepkids were. His excuse was that I'm still bitter and will ruin the ceremony. Over time, he only paid just the child support and I was completely neglected. When my dad had my half-brother, he was busy with him and ignored me. He even stopped taking me to his house for the weekends. He would ignore me. He would tell me that he wouldn't talk to me unless I act like a good child, aka call my stepmom mom rather than her name. He would make excuses not to take me to ice cream or do any activities. There was a time when I graduated elementary school and he promised that he and I would go fishing. He ghosted me and told my mom that there was an emergency. I was again abandoned. By that time, my mom had started dating my stepdad, Lenny. Lenny was the father that I never had. He was a single dad, but he still treated me like his own child. He taught me how to swim, how to drive my car. He attended all the school functions I was in. He was there every time my dad abandoned me. I went very low contact with my dad, only contacting him on Christmas. I don't even call him on Father's Day. So fast forward to now, I'm getting married. I've asked Lenny to walk me down the aisle because he is the only dad that I've ever known. My dad and his family will be coming as guests. This infuriated my dad. He told me that I am his only daughter. 
I shouldn't keep him away from his rights as a father. I'm getting calls from his side of the family too. My father is upset and I'm sidelining him. According to him, he's been a great father and I'm being unfair to him. Also, he doesn't want Lenny to walk me down the aisle at all. I told my dad he can walk his stepdaughter down the aisle and he will only be a guest. I've made my decision. He called me an asshole and told me that he didn't pay his child support just so I could grow up to be an ungrateful brat. So, was I wrong? I know he's my dad, but I just don't feel like he is. I guess my opinion on this situation is, tough tits, dad. Sucks to be you. Paying child support in this situation is less than the bare minimum. This guy's selective memory is going absolutely crazy. He just forgets all the absolutely terrible behavior that he has exhibited and put her through. I'm honestly surprised that OP is even inviting him to the wedding in this instance as I don't feel as though he deserves that spot. Call that a terminally online take all you want, but if it were me in this situation, dad would not be coming to my wedding, and those that supported him in that stance, not coming to the wedding either. It is my day, it is about me and my happiness and my bride's happiness, I would cut them out. I support OP for having a titanium spine in this instance and being able to cop all of this and still have them at her wedding. Absolutely not the asshole for this situation. I don't know how you could think you are, but hey. In the comments, the last word 63 says, Just tell him he's still bitter and will ruin the ceremony. Uninvite him. Added to add, definitely not the asshole. OP could also tell him that he may have been a good dad, it just wasn't to OP, and the only one who's acting like a brat is the one who is supposed to be the father. I wouldn't tell him that. Walking your daughter down the aisle is a privilege, not a right. He may have fathered her, but he sure as hell wasn't a good dad. Not the asshole at all. My wife chose not to have her father walk her down the aisle, as she has a similar relationship with him as you describe. It isn't his right to walk you down the aisle because he donated some DNA. You owe him nothing. Seems like Lenny has earned that right. Get Lenny, your father, to walk you down the aisle. Sperm man can do one. Have a wonderful and magical day. Not the asshole. Your wedding day is about you and your partner. You need to feel comfortable and confident, not go around appeasing other people's wishes and desires. It's their job to put those aside and prioritize you. If they can't do that, that's on them. I think it's lovely that you're honoring your stepdad Lenny this way. He's been there for you time and time again, and he will appreciate this more than you think. I'm sure the symbolism of this decision is a little painful for your dad, but it is what it is. He was absent and didn't make much of an effort, and now he's shifting the blame on you. Not okay. Don't feel bad. He was the adult who could have made things right with you a long time ago. In short, you do you and enjoy your special day however you want. Update. Sorry guys, I didn't get time to respond to the replies, but I did read them in my spare time. I'm currently at the airport waiting for our plane to our honeymoon, so I thought I should give you an update. And I got married two days ago. I can say that I'm relieved to know that people don't think I'm doing the bad thing, so I did just that. I just texted dad that I'm not changing my decision. If he wants to come to the wedding, he can. I'm not going to force him. Well, that didn't work. He called my mum and asked to talk to me about this situation. I was hoping he would drop this, but no. He had to act as an entitled person. I wrote him a long ass message. I didn't want to talk to him without getting interrupted. My dad interrupts a lot. I told him to give me one good reason that I should let him walk me down the aisle when he never had been a dad in my life. He never cared enough to make his marriage work with mom and decided to betray her and our family. Despite all of that, I still loved him, but every single time he left me and abandoned me. Lenny has been my dad growing up. I doubt he even knows anything about me. He's just some guy who used to pay my child support and with whom I share DNA. He is nothing like my dad because he missed all of the big events in my life. He never cared or even tried to be there for me, and he has the audacity to call me his daughter. Since he didn't do his fatherly duties, I don't think that I should do any daughter duties towards him. How can he possibly think that he could give me away when he already gave me away 20 years ago? A few minutes go by and then he calls me and asks if this is what I've thought about him my entire life. I asked him where was he when I was graduating? Where was he when I won my first prize in dancing competition? Where was he when I needed someone to guide me? 
I dare him to tell me one thing about me. How much does he know me? When was the last time he initiated any conversations with me? He went silent. He asked me if I was still mad about the past. I told him the past was the reason I know he's an unreliable man. All these years, if he's taught me anything, it's that he's a shitty father and someone like him cannot be trusted. I made the biggest mistake of my life believing he would come through. The only reason I never even bother because of what he did in the past. Lastly, I will not push him to come to my wedding. That's his choice. It's not like he's paying for it anyway. And that was it. Later, I got a message from my stepmom that what I said has broken my father. He's very much upset. I told her, well, if he's upset by the truth, then he shouldn't have asked and pushed my buttons. He's ignored me all my childhood. He doesn't get to play the dad. Although, my wedding went smoothly. I would say the majority of my father's side of the family had bailed. I had my mum's side and some of Lenny's family as well, but overall, it was fine. I cannot be more thankful to Lenny, though it still hurts getting betrayed by my own dad, but I'm okay. My kids will know Lenny as their grandfather. In the comments, Hemanucha says, quote, he went silent. He asked me if I was still mad about the past. Good grief. Way to try and shift the blame to the victim. What a jerk he is. A good friend of mine didn't have her father walk her down the aisle. She had her mother do it. Her dad was invited to the wedding, but he was just another guest. You did the right thing. He didn't come. In a way, I'm glad he and his wife skipped it because I would be worrying about his sulking face. Just a thought, have you thought about asking Lenny to adopt you? Adult adoptions are a thing. I adopted my used-to-be stepson when he was 23. Never really thought about it. Lenny is married to my mum, so it never occurred to me that I needed to be adopted. He always treated me like his child. He basically adopted me, but we never finalized the papers. I've been contemplating it with my stepdad as a Father's Day present or for his birthday. I say do it. Like I said above, it's worth it and sends a strong message to your stepdad that you were his and he is yours. Family isn't always blood. It's who steps up and takes responsibility and gives love for no other reason than there is love there. Sugarmama76 says, you broke his fantasy that he was a good father. That's what his current issue is. Stepmom can pound sand because she wasn't the one that suffered. It's amazing how abusers want everything to be in the past. Glad to hear the wedding went well. Your real father Lenny is the man. I bet he's going to spoil his grandchildren relentlessly. Enjoy your life with your chosen family. You earned it. Congrats on the wedding. You did the right thing. Being a dad is more than just being part of creating a life. It's a lifelong process involving time, effort, and love. Your bio dad, refused to call him dad, thought paying child support was enough, but now realized that he's hurt you and abandoned you. You don't consider him a father as he's never tried and doesn't know the wonderful person that you've become. It's his loss anyway. Enjoy the honeymoon. He couldn't even get over himself, put himself aside, and show up for her here. The truth hurts, and what hurts worse is a little kid being constantly disappointed by a grown adult, and even after all his talk of being dad, he still didn't go. Yep, this was his opportunity to show that he had listened to what she said, respected her decision, and might be some potential to rebuild a relationship. But nope, instead, he had a tantrum and yet again failed to show up for his daughter. I worry all the time whether I'm doing the right thing or not, whether my motives are pure enough, whether someone might have the right to resent me, and then I see people like OP's dad who apparently have zero insight into themselves or the effect they have on the world. It's wild. Man's really like, wow, did you think that I was a bad dad this whole time? Did you notice how much you weren't doing, mate? My takeaway is, I could probably stand to worry less and they need to worry a lot more. But also, it helps with understanding why some people are the way they are. They actually don't have the ability to self-examine, so they just do whatever without counting the cost. I think that's a skill that can be taught, to an extent at least. But a lot of people don't have anyone to teach them, and it's hard to pick up that habit as an adult. Not an excuse for being a shit, but I have some empathy. Imagine not understanding why people react to you the way they do, and having no idea how to change it. 
It must feel like everyone's just out to get you for no reason. So of course you act mad and hurt and act even worse and pretty soon you've effed up your entire life without ever realizing how or why. Yeah, I'd like to end this story with that sentiment. I feel like a lot of people in this world could do with some self-reflection and realizing why they have an impact on others, how they're impacting others and how they can change for the better. I feel as though it may be a bit too late for the father in this story to do that. Instead of stepping up for his daughter and changing and being the better person, he decided to abandon her on her wedding day. It's alright, not like she isn't used to that anyway. <laughs> Just another one of those fun things in life, isn't it? And unfortunately, like this last comment said, he probably won't even think about it. No self-examination, just, oh, I'm just gonna do whatever, not gonna count the cost of this. It's gotta be everyone else that's the problem, not me. But yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think of this one down in the comments below. Any uh, similar experiences? And that's where I'm gonna end today's episode, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.